Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Friday kind of random video um, that we do here sometimes. So today it's all about making a fade manager. So that is what we're going to be doing today. Then when I press on my button, it's going to fade my screen to a white, to a black. Any color could be another image even. So let's get started right away. What I am going to do is I am going to create a new script that I'll call fade manager. Again, I just like creating um, scripts that are static. Now I'm going to create a static instance of that and of course if you don't like creating too many statics um, I know I do a lot in my videos but that's only because I like to call them from pretty much anywhere in my code if you don't want to of course you can just put it in somewhere else okay so public static fade manager instance and that is going to be set get as I like doing it and then we're going to create a awake so private void awake and I'll just say instance is equal to this and that's pretty much it for that. We need more fields, so this is going to be put on a canvas uh, by himself that is going to have an image. The image is the thing we're going to be fading in and out. So we're going to have a reference to that, so private image, which we can't access right now because we need unity engine.ui. So private image, this image, we'll need also a private bool is in transition, private float transition float to know where exactly during the transition we are right now and a uh, private bool is showing you'll see why we use that in a second and finally private float duration so the duration of that fade that's a lot of field but uh, we're gonna be needing all of them so the first thing I like to do is actually get a reference to that image now um, maybe I should make this public let's go ahead and make this public so I don't have to do that in the awake. And uh, we're just going to go put that on an object really quickly. So I will go over here, right click, create a new UI image. Now this is going to create you a canvas, of course. This is the canvas that is going to be the, uh, the fade manager. We can also put the script on it. And um, let's just make sure everything is fine. So what we have here is, is scale with screen size. That's going to work with me. In fact, it doesn't really matter if it scales with screen size or not because the image I'm going to be using, I want this to be scaling on both axes. So this very icon here. And then I'll just put everything on zero, so it gives you something like that. And uh, that can be an image, that can be a splash screen, it's really up to you. For me, I'll be using a simple white color. Okay, so we've got this simple white color, this is going to be the fade image. And we're going to put it as a parameter in this image. Now this image might not be a good name anymore, but doesn't really matter. Let's change it. Fade image. Okay. So pretty much from anywhere in our code, since this is static, we want to have a function that is going to fade in and fade out. So I'll just create a public void fade and I'll say uh, boolean showing and also float duration. So what you send to that very fade function is, are you actually showing a fade or are you hiding it and then also how long is it going to take you to hide or show that so we'll say is showing is equal to showing we'll say is in transition is now equal to true that will be useful for the update uh, that we'll put in really soon and now duration is equal to duration if you're confused you can say this dot duration is equal to the duration parameter we get and then transition is going to equal is showing the transition float is um, what we're going to be using to control the lerp. So if you're actually starting from nothing and then you're showing the image, you're going to start at the 0%. And if you start from something and you want to go back to hiding it, you're going to start at 1. And that's pretty much all we need in here. Now we're going to do a simple update. So private private void update. And we'll say if is not in transition. Is in transition. So not with the exclamation sign here. If it's not in transition, we don't need to bother about anything. We just return. Fair enough. Now let's do transition. Is plus equal is showing. So... So say you are showing your fade, so if you're going from no image to an image, then you want to increment that transition float. So you want to say 
time the delta time times and then I'll say 1 divided by duration and that's what happens if you're trying to show your fade now if you're trying to hide it it's the exact same thing but we say minus time the delta time times 1 divided by duration and it should actually work and um, once you have that transition flow this is where you do the lerp so we'll go down here we'll say fade image dot color is equal to color dot lerp and then we're lerping in between um, a white with alpha and a white without alpha actually it's the other way around so we're actually lerping from a white without alpha to a white with alpha so we do new color one 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 and then zero for the alpha and the second parameter we can just use color dot white it's going to work as well it's pretty much just it says right here solid white RGBA is one 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 and we use the transition float of course to lerp in between of those um, and that's pretty much all we need really let's just make sure we clamp it though so say we were past a certain number let's just make sure we stop the update so if transition oops if transition is bigger than one or and now I need to do the pipe operators here they are or transition is below zero then we can go ahead and say is in transition is equal to false so we pretty much just stop our update until there is another fade that needs to happen all right so that's a lot of code um, we haven't really tested anything out hopefully we don't get anything that breaks let's look at the console it seems to work right now and here is what we are going to do so in my start or never mind that don't do anything in the start um, we're gonna head over to the fade manager make sure the image has a reference for some reason it dropped it so I put it back here and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make sure that the alpha is on zero at the beginning so I actually see something alright now with this code that we didn't really test out and uh, let's actually do that so with this code what is going to happen is that we have this function called fade and whenever we call it we're able to actually show a fade but it does not automatically you know you only show the fade and then you're stuck there for a while you have to press on something else to call the fade with the uh, false boolean up here so I'll quickly just test this out and then we'll try to implement it in a more efficient manner so if input I'll just use my input manager um, input manager dot a button so if I press on the a button it is going to do a say we're gonna do why is my intelligence a little bit weird indentation I mean Oh well it's going to do a fade we're gonna start the fade it's going to last 1.25 seconds now if I press on the B button we're gonna start a fade again then it's actually going to hide it and we're gonna try hiding it for three seconds so it's gonna be it's gonna it's supposed to be taking three seconds to actually hide that fade so it's right now it's binded on my A and my B button and I will try it and I think those are functions yep those are functions that's why alright let's test this out so I'm moving around pressing on A and it took 1.25 seconds to show this and I'm pressing on B and it's taking longer as you could tell this is A and this is B and now if you want to make this process through scenes all you really gotta do is make sure the object the fade manager is on is not destroyable so you do a don't destroy on load in the awake of the fade manager or um, on the object that is above it so in my case I have did it on the canvas here but in our case that we just did um, the canvas was the fade manager at the same time so it pretty much works that way so if you want to do this through scene all you really gotta be doing is um, putting a don't destroy onload on the awake and let's just have a look at what it gives us in a real context here's one so it starts fading and then I'll load a new scene and it's pretty much just transparent so that is pretty much it for the fade manager you just gotta be finding the places where you put your function calls of course 
And um, there's also another really neat approach that I've started doing on mobile game since the... And I'm just talking about it, I'm not going to show it, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because it's a really long thing. But right now with Unity, we have the opportunity to um, have multiple scenes running at the same time. It's now possible since a few versions ago. And what I'm pretty much doing is, if you take a quick look, if I press on play, I load my scene. There is actually two scenes running on right now. There is the menu scene in the back, as you can tell. And there is my game scene, which is currently scrolling down and taking the actual camera space. And then as soon as the animation is completed, I delete my menu scene, as you could tell up here. So that is another approach that you might like. Instead of fading an actual white and then loading a scene, you could actually just have both scene running and just replace what you see. So on the left screen, it's pretty much just seamless. And... Um, on the right scene, you can tell that we're actually loading a scene and then deleting it. So that was just another idea I've, I wanted to add on top of that. And um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give me a like. Really appreciate that. And if you have any comment or question or suggestion, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to just answer them as soon as possible, if they're a question, of course. And uh, other than that, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.